Now we've got to set the depth. And you can see I'm getting a definite good mark there. Tail vice also is H&T Gordon. And uh, you will see down the track how useful and versatile these really are. I've got the fence right up against the blade because it's a half inch blade. And I've set the depth stop here at 10 mil. But what I'm actually gonna do, I'm not gonna go all the way down. I'll show you various ways you can use either of these tools to obtain the same result. Now there's uh, different schools of thought. I like starting at one end with these and gradually working my way up. A lot of people like to start here and take the complete shaving, but I'll start at the end and gradually work my way up. So I said, I'm not gonna do it all, but you get an idea of how that's actually doing it. So the next one we'll use is the rebate play. To make it run nice and smoothly, what I've got there is just a little jar with some whiting in it, a little bit of linseed oil, and I just rub that over the bottom. It just gives me a little bit of lubrication. Sometimes I use candle wax, but um, on wooden planes, it's okay to use raw linseed oil, not boil, just raw. And you'll notice, oh, the plane just goes so much easier. Yeah, if you look here, I've actually reached the line here. I've got a little way to go here and a little way to go here. That means when I've been planing, I've been leaning a little bit too much when I'm getting into the middle. So that's easily overcome. All I do is lean a little bit heavier in the start. And a little bit heavier on the exit. And I think that is just about it. We're down to the mark. All right, now we're coming to the point where we've got to cut the 45 degree mitres, because this is going to be a, a square frame. So four sides, which is 45 degrees on each mitre. Now there's various ways you can do it. I've got an array of things here. This one I'll actually do on the Nobex saw, which I'll bring over shortly. But what I will do in the next lot of videos, I'll do some workshop jigs that you can make up. So in that, I'll show you how to make a mitre box so you can actually cut using the saw at 45 degrees and I'll also do a shooting board so you can shoot at 90 degrees using your hand plane and we'll set it up so you can shoot at 45 degrees so that'll be on the next lot of videos after this and after that we'll also do some polygons which uh, I might do a six-sided thing which I think I said earlier on six-sided mirror but for expediency, I'll just use the saw, but be reassured, I'll make some jigs that if you haven't got all this whiz-bang stuff I've got at the moment, you can still be uh, productive and effective and do woodwork with limited tools if you like. But remember to keep tension on this plate and we'll have it at 45 degrees. At the moment, I'm just gonna cut the ends off and then we can measure and be more precise with the actual cutting to length. So when you're actually measuring the frame, you're measuring this inside portion here, not the step, not the outside, but the inside. So we measure back there, 250, put a mark. So you've got a pencil mark there now of where to cut. 
There are the two that are going along the top and the bottom. Now measure how high you want it. And bear in mind when you cut this mitre, it has to correspond. You don't want to cut this angle again because if you did, and we put these together, you would end up with that, which would be a rebate on this side and the front of the frame there. And really it's not a good look and it's not what we're after. And that's the reason you end up having it a lot longer than you think it is because a lot of times you'll measure a picture and you go, oh, that's the size I need. But then you don't allow for the, the, the width of the timber, this, this part of the timber. And also when you're cutting the angles out to make sure you get the right angles, you're gonna lose that much waste in the middle. So it's always a good idea, as I did with this one, I went two, three, four inches oversized. Better to have a little bit of wastage than a lot of wastage because you've cut it wrong. Now this would be the time, if you had a shooting board, which again I said I'd make, to clean up all the ends to make sure they match and they're all nice and square. These are pretty, pretty good, I've got to tell you. So just as a test, yeah, I think that's, that's starting to look all right. Now we've got to glue the frame up. What I use is just ordinary uh, oven bake. And the only reason I use that is because it keeps my bench tidy and doesn't let glue dribble all over the place. The clamping system I'm going to use is absolutely brilliant. And there it is there. Nobex again. It is one of the simplest and most effective clamping systems I think I've ever, ever seen. It is so brilliant in its simplicity. In Australia, Promac Tools are the people that bring this in and they're available in a lot of stores. Um, if you're not in Australia, check them out online. It's uh, Nobex, N-O-B-E-X. So let's go. Glue. I'm using a PVA here. You can use whatever glue you like. I'll do a mock glue up first to make sure that all the angles fit nicely. And then we'll do the real glue up. Now this is where this Nobex clamping system just comes into its own. Please see how simple this is. So just put them all together like that. And tension on the string here and there's a cleat that sits down in here pull it down into the cleat and there you have it i mean honestly what could be easier than that they are really nice tight joints so i know that's going to work happy with that now it's just a question of gluing it up i always double glue which means i put glue on both surfaces a lot, of glue, a lot of glue manufacturers say you only have to put glue on one surface and that could be true. But in my experience of over nearly 30 years of woodwork, it's not as good as double gluing. It's only a little bit more glue, but it saves so much heartache because you can almost guarantee it's not going to come apart. That's the first glue wipe under this bench. If you've ever had a look at any of my workbenches, there is so much glue underneath, it's always clean the fingers there. Make sure everything's lined up nicely. Square, put some pressure on it. Make sure they're nice and flush on the tops here. And that is it. I'm going to leave that dry, in fact I might leave it dry overnight, and then when we come back we'll cut out the glass, we'll cut the embroidery to size using a tool you might not have seen before as well, and then we'll cut the backing board, put some pins in it, put a bit of chain on it, and that's just about it finished. A 
H&T Cordon Company, Classic Plane Mokers, Tormek T4, Japanese Tools Australia, Promac, Lebron Finishing Products, IMUF Safety First, Nobex, and the Plano Clamping System. <laughs>